Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I would do a quick review video for you today. Um, now I've had my eye on a few different carving tools recently um, and one of them has been something I've actually been after for a very long time um, which is one of these. Um, now this is a Mokotogan. Um, it is based off of a um, Native American Indian carving tool design. Um, it's a fairly specialist piece of equipment um, as far as you know you don't generally get things that are, are shaped like this or are used like this very often um, in sort of modern carving tools. Um, obviously this is a reproduction um, and it's made by Ben Orford. Now you would have seen some of my other videos um, I really really like Ben's um, tools. Um, I think they're really well made um, and, and they're just you know for, for the price and the quality um, I think they're really really good. Um, now this is not an advertisement video, I'm not being paid by Ben, I haven't received this for free, blah blah blah, all the legally stuff. Um, I just really like his gear um, so I decided to treat myself. Now this is the 3 inch blade version, it also comes in a 4 inch blade version um, and it cost me, top of my head, I think it was about £60. Um, so it's not a cheap piece of equipment, um, especially if you're going down the budget route, but it was something I've wanted for a while, um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to get one. Um, now I haven't used this yet, um, this arrived in the post for me this morning and all I've done is taken it out of this little cardboard tube that it came in. Um, so what I'm going to do, first and foremost, I'm just going to bring the camera a bit closer in. Um, I'm going to take this wrap off, give you a few details, um, and then I think, well, you know, I'm not actually planning on making anything today. Um, I just really wanted to use it on a few scraps of wood just to see how it performs. And I figured I'd do that kind of, you know, on camera for the first time. So you'll have to bear with me if I fluff it up. Um, so that's what I'm planning on doing. So let me move the camera in and we'll take a look. Right then guys, so here we have it. Um, and hopefully you'll see straight away, this has got a very unique handle design. Um, I will come back to that later, but just as a bit of a close-up, you know, it's a very well-made handle. Um, I really like these sort of faceted ridges, so it gives you a nice good grip. Um, and also, one thing to note with a lot of Ben's carving tools, um, not so much all of his knives, because he does make sheaths for some of them, um, but most of his carving tools, things like this, his spoon knives, come with a leather wrap. Um, now that is A, to keep the cost down because obviously a good quality sheath um, is not cheap um, and actually it's a really clever and simple way of protecting this blade. Um, now there are various ways in which you can remove these, um, usually you will just undo this first piece, I'll just do that on camera for you, and then you literally just unwrap it and what you'll notice, I'll show you how to wrap this back up at the end, but basically you'll kind of take your piece of leather, you'll fold it over the top and then wrap it round. Um, and actually, as I say, I think it's a really clever way um, of protecting your tools and especially if you've bought tools some, from somewhere um, where they don't come with sheaves, this is a really, really good option. Um, so moving on to the blade. Um, this, as I say, is the three inch blade. It also comes in a four inch version. Um, and I actually thought long and hard about how I was planning on using this. Um, and I don't think I needed the longer version. Um, at least time will tell, but that, that's my plan anyway. Um, it's got an internal bevel, which hopefully you can see in here. Internal meaning that it's on the inside of the sweep and not on the outside edge. Um, and going back to the handle, um, and I'm not, I will show you the sharpness of this in a moment, but the handle, as I say, is very unique. And if I just turn it sort of around this way a bit, um, the, the idea behind it is not that you hold it like this, as in a traditional knife, though you can do that, and I've seen people do it, and I, th I think that's what makes this tool so versatile. You can hold it like this, you know, you can cut spikes onto sticks for making temp pegs and so on and so forth. Uh, but actually, the way in which it's designed to be used is you take your hand, and you lay it down like, so let, me move my, let me move myself around a bit so you can see me. So you lay, your, lay it on your hand like this, 
close your fist over the thicker section of this handle and then you use your thumb almost as a pivot up here to give it some um, stability and some fine control and the idea being, hopefully you can notice from the screen there, the blade is actually pointing towards me and what you do is you pull it in a, you, you use it in a pulling motion towards yourself um, very much like a one-handed draw knife was the way I heard it described recently. Um, so that's basically it. Um, you can see, hopefully, Ben's logo stamped into the blade there, um, and also his other logo branded into the handle. Um, and again, as I say, these are just really, in my mind, really quality bits of kit. Um, now, these blades are partial tang, uh, meaning they don't go all the way through this handle, um, and they are epoxied in from what I can tell. Um, so what I'll do, I'm just gonna move the camera around a little bit so you can actually see what it is I'm gonna be doing. Right then guys, so what I have here is a piece of semi-seasoned eucalyptus. Um, the outsides are beginning to dry out, the inside's still quite damp. Um, and what I figured I would do is, that, you know, this is the kind of thing that potentially you would use this kind of knife for. Um, you know, they're meant to be really good for making things like canoe paddles, um, you know, things of that nature, long things that you want to kind of, um, you know, smooth down, round off, that kind of thing. Now again, as I say, I've never used this before. This is a first for me. Um, it's sort of similar in design to a farrier's knife to a degree. Um, but you know, obviously this is very much designed for uh, woodworking, in particular green woodworking. Um, now one quick point on safety with this, um, a bit like most um, sort of tools where you cut towards yourself, it's very important keep your arm and your especially your elbow locked into your side um, that way when you're making a cut it's very very difficult to bring that blade close enough to cut yourself I mean, it is possible so you do still need to take care um, but obviously if your arms out here somewhere and you're kind of doing this you can you can very easily jam it into yourself um, so without further ado I'm going to make a couple of cuts here away from the camera um, and then I think once I've uh, sort of figured out exactly what I'm doing I'll come in a bit closer and show you a bit of a close up. Maybe that's a bit too much pressure. Hmm, okay. So, from what I understand with this, and I appreciate I'm not doing very well so far, um, a lot of this is all about the angle at which you take the cut. So obviously the more acute the angle, the deeper the blade will bite. Um, so I assume what I need to do is this, which is actually keep it not, uh, not very deep. I actually want to keep quite a shallow cut on this. That seems to be working a little bit better. Now again, this eucalyptus doesn't really like being carved very much. Um, so let me see, you can see that on the camera. And again, you're just pulling this towards yourself like so. Now the bark on this is quite thick. And as I say, it hasn't liked being cut when I've been using it previously. So if I can just skin this down, just to get to the wood below, we'll see if that makes a difference. There we go, get that off the blade. So now we're down to the wood. And again, it's difficult trying to keep my thumb on here at the moment because I am used to holding a knife in a very different way. Um, but actually, it's fairly intuitive and you can see hopefully the color of this wood here. So this is still very damp inside, it's still very much green wood. And if I had debarked all of this and was just trying 
to sort of round this down, smooth it out. Maybe I'm making a spoon blank, you know, or something like that. Um, you know, I think this will work really well. And it really is one of those tools that because it doesn't really work in the same manner as anything I'm used to using, this is going to take a while to get used to. Now, I've also got a piece of, uh, a very small piece of uh, seasoned birch here. Um, just to sort of see how that performs on dry wood and as I sort of would have expected you know there's no problem and it doesn't matter whether I use right on the very tip of this blade or right at the very end or somewhere in the middle you know this is cutting really really well exactly as I would expect um, and actually the shavings coming off this, for example, if you're making a feather stick, say, say this is the only tool you've got to take out with you. You know, these shavings are coming up really, really nicely, probably better than some of my carving knives. Um, so really that was it, guys. It was just meant to be a really short introduction to this tool. Um, and as I say, it's the first time I've seen this properly out of the box. It's the first time I've taken the wrap off. Um, and actually, it's really, really nice. Um, so you'll definitely be seeing more of this in upcoming videos. Um, I think for things like making spoons, and again, forget the fact almost there's a curve on this. This is not designed for carving the, um, the bowls of spoons. Now, I may actually give that a try. You know, it might be something that uh, potentially you could just use this on its own, um, the only tool you use maybe to make a spoon from a small branch, I don't know. Um, you know, it's certainly not what it's mass uh, meant to be designed for, but then again, you know, you never know, it may become a really versatile uh, tool in my arsenal. Um, so very quickly then, sorry, things falling over in the workshop, just before I go, I was going to show you how to wrap this. Um, so basically, the way I would do it is I would take my leather wrap like so, and start down here somewhere and just wrap it over the end and then start wrapping it all the way around this blade. Now this is, I don't know, probably two, maybe three mil thick veg tan leather from what I can tell. Um, so it's pretty tough stuff and it's not gonna, uh, uh, you know, cut through very easily unless you're silly and sort of start putting lots of pressure on the blade. Um, and when you get to this stage here, take your finger, put a wrap around, and then while you've got that open, pull the piece through and just tie it off. And then you've got that nice and secured in there. You know, you can put that in your pack, you can put it in your tool bag, whatever it is you're going to do with it. Um, and it's now nice and safe. Um, so, as I say, just as a concept, um, for anyone that's not familiar with this kind of sort of protection, if you don't have a sheath or you're not able to make one or you don't want to or whatever, um, this is a really nice option for protecting bladed tools. Um, so anyway guys, I hope that was useful. As I say, it's a tool that I've been, um, I've looked at for a very long time, probably years uh, was the first time, years ago should I say, was the first time I saw one of these um, and I thought it was quite an interesting concept, um, but at the time not interesting enough for me to lay out any money on. Um, now that I've bought one, um, I can see this getting a fair amount of use. Um, will it replace a standard carving knife for me? Probably not, um, but actually, certainly in situations where I only want to take one tool with me because space is limited or I want it to be lightweight or whatever it might be, um, I think this is actually going to be a really good option because it will cut like a knife if needs be. Um, it works very well as a, uh, a sort of a one-handed draw knife or a one-handed plane, um, which is really good for sort of smoothing things off. Um, you know, you've got a rounded point on here, so it's a little bit safer than, than pulling a knife towards you by doing sort of, um, you know, sort of inward cuts, that kind of thing, because there's less of a point if you do slip. Um, but then again, it is still a very, very sharp blade, so you know, obviously you, know, you need to be taking care and that kind of thing. Um, so that's it for the time being. Interested to hear if any of you guys have used one of these, want to use one of these, um, whether you think the design is something that would be quite useful or if you think it's just a little bit gimmicky. Um, I, mean, I certainly think probably the former at the moment, um, but as I say, I will be using this um, in upcoming videos. Um, I need to have a think about what, uh, 
what to make to try and get the best out of this tool. Um, but as, as I say guys, comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.